Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here with another tu video tutorial uh, from the Pixel Pushers uh, website. Uh, I'm here in a lobby in a hotel in, the, uh, in Birmingham, just uh, out, uh, inside from the, one of the shots that I've taken that I'm going to be editing today. Okay, so let's open that up. So this photograph is of a crane just outside uh, where I'm sitting now and it's something that was taken, a shot that was taken just earlier this evening. And we're going to do a quick edit on this by selecting the foreground, blurring it and also applying any other effects that we want to on this. This will be a series of three um, video tutorials um, uh, sort of uh, uh, roughly titled um, cranes, trains and automobiles uh, play on the, uh, the film uh, uh, planes, trains and automobiles because I've just been to the cinema so I thought that might be an appropriate uh, title. Um, the classic uh, uh, comedy with Steve Martin and John Candy from uh, a couple of decades back. Right, so what are we going to be doing with this image? First of all we're going to select the foreground. Okay, so you know my favourite tool. It's the um, uh, um, selection tool at the top here. Okay, I nearly selected the in-painting tool there. So we're just going to increase the size of the brush. Don't worry too much about the accuracy at this stage because we're going to refine it. Okay, so zoom right in. Reduce the size of the brush. Now here, we're not too concerned about the actual accuracy here because we're going to refine it. Okay, so all these branches will be refined, you'll see how well it works. Okay, and then the crane itself, this will work really well. So roughly select it like that. So I'm just pressing the space bar to move the, the image around. Zoom in again reduce the size of the brush okay I'm a little quiet because uh, there's other things going on of course in the lobby okay so once we've done that click on refine like that and we just reduce the size of the brush and all we want to do is just refine that selection so we get all the through the girders and through the framework of the crane just do a section at a time and if it doesn't quite work just um, undo it and go over it again but that's worked quite well so the size of the brush is critical here so if it doesn't work reduce the size of the brush increase the size of the brush that's working quite well I'm just going to go through this. Bear with me, it won't take too long. Okay, that's working really. You can see that you don't need to be that accurate when you first initially select it. What's key is the refine option, and that works really well. It's very uh, intuitive in Affinity Photo and um, in fact, this effect that we want, where we want to blur either the background or the foreground independently of the rest, doesn't really matter because we're blurring it. doesn't really matter that it's that accurate. But of course, if we can get it accurate selection, even better. And just doing a section at a time, see how this tree option works, the tree branches. So I'm just going to go through that and do that. There we go. Yeah, that's worked quite well. And then we'll just do this, these branches here. Again, a section at a time is really what we're looking to do. Because the software is pretty intuitive in knowing what's the foreground and what's the background once you've done a rough selection. If it doesn't quite get it right, then all you do is just go over it again 
or you refine it using the foreground or background tabs here in this pop-out window. So I'm just going to increase the size of the brush here, speed things up a bit. And sometimes it works better if you zoom out and increase the size of the brush. It all depends on the image. See that work quite well. There we go. Okay, I think that will be done. And then down here in the output, we want to put it on a new layer. And then click apply. And then we just zoom out and that's selected so we've got the background there and the foreground selected and now on the foreground we just want to apply a blur filter so so filters blur and let's try a zoom blur okay just move this slider let's have it about there we'll put the background back on so what we've now applied is a zoom filter on the foreground but not on the background and of course we selected it, we duplicated it so that crane is actually there twice okay so that gives it a little bit of a it's not totally blurred you can still see the crane through it but you're getting this blurred effect uh, on the item so that, that's uh, much better than actually blurring it um, as is without duplicating it, selecting it and duplicating it which is what we've done to the trees, to the buildings and to the crane itself. Now if we want to give that background a little bit more punch because there's a bit of colour there we can just duplicate that layer, change the blend mode to say light and all screen, overlay, soft light, soft light. So if we just take that off see how much it improves it okay or changes it if you don't like it obviously you can uh, change it back again we can add a border to it we can add other filters to it but that's a quick uh, demonstration on what you can do with the selection tool with the filters tool and uh, and also uh, the idea of blurring a duplicate of something but not actually moving it cutting it away and that can be really quite effective so that's a quick tutorial on that and then we'll be doing one on um, uh, automobiles and one on trains as well. So see you next time. Thanks for watching.